So, we're calving a little bit early, and uh, I helped coach wrestling, so I was going to the wrestling tournament. My wife had to uh, had to bring some calves in the barn. We're gonna swing in this morning and uh, see how the calves doing. It's doing good. Notice is something that's kind of off on their own like that one was but when you're driving through these you're looking for any that have their udders are got real tight or they're kind of got a twitchy tail or the tail might be kind of kinked heifers a lot of the times won't go off on their own they'll have a calf right in the middle of a herd cows will usually kind of go off on their own and get some privacy part of it Part of it's that heifers you always calve in a smaller space too, it seems like, or we do. Cows are out in a big old open pasture and the heifers are all kind of confined in a smaller space so we can check them at night easier. Looks like we got a couple calves we gotta get sorted out. I don't know if I'll get that far today or not. That would be nice. Buddy. Hey buddy. Have you been up today? Have you been up today, buddy? Come on. There you go. There you go, mama. Heifers don't do the best job of getting their babies licked off sometimes. When it's warm like today. 30 degrees or 25 degrees, it's not as big of a deal, but when it's 20 below on Monday, they'll have to go to the barn right away. I have one of my old high school wrestlers. He feeds for me most days. Um, on the days that I feed, my schedule's kind of like this. I start the tractor. While the tractor's warming up, I go to the office and make a pot of coffee. And uh, this time of year, I go check heifers and buzz through the cows and make sure everything, there's not anything that's just blatantly wrong. And then when I come back, the tractor's usually warmed up and my coffee's done. I grab a cup of coffee and I head out to start feeding for the day. I'll take you guys along today. Tyler, head out and start to feed. I've got the feeding crew. Deke. 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 Deke's on the line and trip. Looks like the horse has got the staff yard again. 
pair it up the mail of the exact same stuff that I've got rolled out for them. They'd just rather come in here and tear it up, I guess. So, the first thing I'm feeding is I've got some heifers that aren't got yet out on the pivot. And uh, I'm going to feed them one bale of this sorghum straw that we bought. And it, it ended up being kind of high on nitrate. It's not, not really high, but uh, high enough that I'm mixing it in with some alfalfa. Nitrates are. Really high on nitrates, they can kill livestock. But this hay is just high enough that it, it could potentially cause your heifers to abort or your cows to abort their calves. So we're mixing it in with some alfalfa that we raised ourselves to kind of reduce the potency of it. So we'll head out to the pivot and feed those heifers first. I'll figure out how to flip this camera back and forth. Alright, this is the test. See if I can figure out how to flip this camera back and forth. Nope, I can't figure it out. I'm hopeless. I'm hopeless, people. Alright, we're out on what we call the flood field now. It's gonna be, I've got 135 cows out here. Uh, Sorry, my windows are so dirty, but there's 135 cows. You can't see that very good. Gonna feed them 27 pounds a piece. I've got scales on this bale processor, uh, so I'll feed them as close to 27 pounds as I can. And same deal as the heifers, we're mixing in that sorghum straw with uh, some of our own home raised alfalfa. Alright, so that bale and a half weighed 2,465 pounds, so uh, we're feeding 3,650 pounds total, so I only need to feed 1,185 pounds off of this bale that's in the processor, and it weighs 1,730, so I'll have a little bit left over to take on across the highway to the other bunch of cows. This is our last big bunch of cows, a well, bigger bunch of cows that we're going to feed today. There's probably... There's about 120 cows in here and 30 bulls and a couple longhorns. Uh, these guys haven't started calving yet. They start calving next week. So probably tomorrow we'll get them in the corral and sort the bulls off, move the cows to a different pasture and leave the bulls back over here. So we'll get these guys fed and fill the bales in the, fill the rings in the, at the barn and go on with the day. So these cows here are ones that we'd actually sorted off. It's been dry, really dry here the last two years. And we sorted these off. And if it doesn't rain or snow a bunch, I guess by spring, these will be the first to go, unfortunately. They're a really nice set of cows. But there's no grass, there's no cows. Hey guys. Hey big boy. Hey buddy. Hey buddy. Well, yeah, not today. He knows I don't have any trees.
Well, I went and spun off some third cutting alfalfa for the pears because the, the higher quality hay helps with milk production. So I went and spun that off and surprise, surprise, the horse is uh, headed straight to it. So we got to go chase the horses off of the alfalfa and then I might buzz out onto the pivot and check a calf that was born there this morning. Deke, should we go check the new calf, buddy? All right, let's go. All right, here's the calf that was born this morning. Out on the pivot. I don't want to get too terrible close. Because it looks like he's about to be where he needs to be. Got the idea. She has a point clean yet. Good mom. That's good news. One less calf than I still do for. Deke, baby, you ain't gonna finish feeding? You ready, Deke? The most impatient dog in the world. He never waits. He's got to push me out of his way to get in. And then the laziest dog in the world. He just hangs out. You know we were working, Trip. You know that there was work to do? Did you just hang out here and listen to the radio? Oh, dang. Next thing's next. We've got to feed these buffalo. They're usually kind of fun. They'll probably get out on me. They usually do. And check on my son's goldfish. Looks like they're kicking. Yeah. I'm going to lose this battle. I'm just going to go ahead and do it. See if I can get him in later. this panel in here that I needed so now I get to uh, try to figure out how to get this panel out while it's in here I have no idea if you can see that or not but we'll give her a shot Nothing to it. The idea was that this 12 foot panel was gonna fit perfectly right here, but the buffalo or something bumped this one, so it's like 13 and a half feet. So that's nice. Let's see how that works. Should work. Go get these guys out. Got them into this little bit bigger lot. I'll put a third cutting alfalfa bale in here for the pears that have to come through the barn. These are calves that we didn't get gathered in time when we shipped. They're part ninja. This longhorn we bought from a buddy. 
I'd say he's three fourths ninja. They're very athletic. Look up there, guys. Keep going. Look up there. Keep going. There we go. I think they'll be a lot happier out there. Than the tell you to take your shoes off when you come in here? Yeah. How come you didn't take your shoes off? Because my dad didn't take what? them off. Whatever, dude. Don't throw me under the bus. Get out of here. Let's go work on that water tank. I'm throwing you under the bus. Where's the water tank we're working on? Uh, nobody knows it's at our mom's house. <laughs> it's in the hill pasture. Shut that light off. Let's rock and roll. Now that's the end of this video. Bye. Don't forget, mindset's everything. And here's step one of how it works. This mom didn't take care of her calf, so I grab it with this sled on the four-wheeler. Bring it in here to this little heater. And I'll set it in this heater while I go get his mom. And I'll bring her in and milk her and give it to him so he can have some colostrum get some passive immunity You guys gotta stay back here. Longhorns gotta stay back here. Hey, boy. Hey, boy. Ah. Hey, you guys. Hey, you guys. Hey, you guys. Shh. Hey, guys. Hey. Hey. Let's go. Go get your fed.
Here, Nick.